Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sapnuski, and thank you so much for popping by my channel. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to do the whip pan transition in LumaFusion. I don't know what's going on with my hair light, but I think I need a new one. It's clearly not acting right. So let's go ahead and get into the whip pan transition. Let's go ahead and jump into how we're going to do the whip pan transition in LumaFusion. Okay, so there are going to be some rules whenever you're doing the whip pan transition in your editing software. You want to follow a flow with your video clips. So you see how my camera is moving to the right in this one clip? And once again, the product is moving to the right. You always want to follow the same line of movement with your video clips. It just wouldn't make sense to go from this particular clip and then coming down from an overhead shot. I mean, obviously you could do it, but it just would not look nice and fluid and congruent. So let's go ahead and go between these two clips. Before we do any editing with the whip pan transition, it's very important that the very first thing that you do to both of these clips is to color correct and color grade. Now you're going to pick out the two clips that you're going to want to do this transition in. Go between the two video clips and now we're going to snip eight frames from the beginning of one clip and the end of the other clip. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, scissor cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, scissor cut. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is go on the very first cut and we are going to edit this clip. Make sure that we're all the way to the very beginning. Now what we're going to do is make sure we're in frame and fit and we are going to hit the size and position. Now what we want to do is sweep this in from the right. Now we can't do that just by moving the X because then when we move that there's nothing here to do that pan effect. So what we need to do, let me put that right back. What we need to do is when we move the camera, we have that little bit of movement that there is going to be footage when we scroll across the screen. So what we want to do right off the bat is we're going to do our very first keyframe. Now what we want to do is increase the size of this. Uh, I would say get it into the high 20s. That's good. And now we're also going to want to increase the size on the x-axis. That's going to widen this shot. And this is what's going to allow us to get that panning movement. So what we're going to do is increase it, I would say at least up into the high th or the low 300s. That's good. Okay, so that is going to drop everything into that first keyframe. Every action that we just did is saved under that very first keyframe. So now get all the way to the very end by hitting that right arrow key. Now we're going to drop our next keyframe. And now what we're going to do is just move the X slider to your left and make sure that we're bringing the very end of that video to the end of the screen right there. Bring it all the way to the left until that is even with your screen. Okay. So now what we want to do is go to color and effects. Now make sure we hit the left arrow back over. We want to be at the very, very beginning. So let's go ahead and go to the water drop looking icon and we're going to go to motion 80. So let's go ahead and drop our very first keyframe. And what we're going to do is just make sure that this is at zero. Now hit the right arrow key to get all the way to the very end. And now we're going to drag this slider all the way up to 100%. Now let's go out of this and we're going to see how this looks so far. Perfect. Okay, so the very next rule of when you're doing your post-editing whip pan transition in your software, whatever you do to the very first cut, when you follow into your second video clip, the very next cut, anything you did in the first cut, you have to do the exact opposite in your next cut. 
So let's go ahead and we're going to go to frame and fit. Now remember what I said, the exact opposite. So make sure we're all the way at the very beginning. We're going to add our very first keyframe. Once again, right off the bat, we are going to increase the size into the high 20s. That's good. Again, we are going to increase the size of the X factor into the high 300s, that's good. So we're doing this exactly the opposite. So now we're going to move the X slider all the way over to the right. There we go. Now we're going to go all the way to the end, so we're gonna hit the right arrow key. We're going to drop our next keyframe, and now we're just gonna return everything to zero. Okay, so now we want to go to color and effects. Hit the back arrow key. We want to be all the way to the very, very beginning. We are going to go to the water drop again. Go to motion 80. And remember what I said, we want to do everything in reverse. So we want to make sure this is all the way up to 100. We're going to drop our very first keyframe there. Now we're going to hit the right arrow key to get all the way to the end. And now we're going to drag this slider all the way to zero. So let's go ahead and back out of this and let's see how this looks. Perfect. Well, that's it, guys. That is how simple it is to do the whip pan transition in LumaFusion. Well, I thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, wear your sunblock. Even though it's getting colder, that doesn't mean that the sun is disappearing. You still have to protect yourself, okay? Wear that sunblock.